Okay, here, I, I want a little um, advice from each of you, because in, in t when you go see a movie that you didn't work on, what do you look for as, as a sign of excellence in your own field? Because I feel like a lot of moviegoers, when they see a movie with beautiful sunsets, they think, oh, that was a great cinematographer. And you think, well, maybe. And, and if, if, if you know, the, 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 the walls are rattling, they think, wow, that was great sound. But I'm thinking you guys probably have subtler things that you look for in, in, in each of your fields. So, so what should we be looking for when we see a movie? What's, what's a really good sign of, uh, of excellence in all of these? Kind of invisibility, the finesse of work, you know, the finesse of the edit and the, and the blending of all the cinema uh, art forms put together, music, sound, acting, directing, uh, costumes, all of it makes one sort of cinematic experience. And when it works, it works, it cooks on all burners. And when it doesn't, it's kind of clunky. So I think I, for me, I look for the finesse of the, of the, of the craft, I think. What, and production design? Yeah, I mean, I think it's just for, um, you know, whatever visually moves the story along and helps to tell the story without outdoing the spoken word. Uh, you never sort of like want to, you know, up, upstage that um, for, for me, you know, unless there's a, a chance to lead the audience down down a path visually that you want to, but um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm all about the, the you know, the, the script and what can help move the story along and I would, you know, never, never want to take anything away from that. So I just, what, whatever, give a voice to the things that don't speak and, and, and help that, you know, the visuals tell the story of uh, what, what the director and what, what the script is, uh, needs to happen. Well, to use a couple of examples that we saw here tonight, uh, if, you, if, you, if you look at the Jungle Book, you know, the scene we saw, you know, none of that stuff exists. All of those animals are computer-generated graphic images. So the, the fact that we actually believe that that tiger walked down and drank out of that pond and talked to those other, uh, those other animals was pretty cool, right? Um, yeah, I thought so. Uh, <laughs> when you take, a, uh, you take a film like La La Land, um, uh, you know, I like the music and I like the score, but that's not what sound mixing is about. Sound mixing is about blending those elements into the narrative of the film. Uh, and, and that's what I look for. And I thought that that was a really great example of, uh, of, uh, of a musical tonight. Too. So that's kind of what I look for. Cinematography? I think I'm looking for voice, looking for a unique voice, someone that can uh, take me somewhere I've not been uh, before. Um, yeah, just looking for someone to, uh, uh, in, in where they come from and what they bring to the, to the, to the script. Um, you know, what we do is we provide our, who, who we are, we make choices from that perspective, and I'm looking for someone to take me somewhere that I've not been before in a unique way. Um, does it put you there? Are you in, does it make it a 3D experience? Does it scare you? Um, does it work as part of the story and does it transport you into that world is what I look for, so. Uh, I never look about nothing sincerely. They ask me if I'm happy at the hand. They say, me happy? I'm not to be happy. I have to be happy the director, the actor, the producer, the studios. I never really thinking about it. I think just to, to, to wrap the movie to the best possible. That's what they're looking for. This is when we were watching other films, correct? Yeah. That's the question. Um, uh, what, was that the question? Yes. <laughs> you can, can, uh, can make, you go can again. Make, can no, it's fine. It's fine. I like the other movies. I like the other yeah, movies. Yeah, I like everything. Okay, good. <laughs> um, I look for, um, when I'm watching a film, if I forget that I'm a costume designer, or if I forget that that's the crane shot, or when I'm just transported by the film, by all of its components, that's when I think it's the best. Like, I vote, I vote strangely though. Like when I'm actually voting, like for like City of God, for instance, got my vote for best costume design. And you know that to me, like I don't remember. This was years ago, but I mean it's just an example of like it's not fancy. It just told the story. Yeah. It served the script. It um, was evocative and truthful. But I'm not saying everything has to be reality either. It just 
tells the story of the script. You help tell the story. And like what Jess said, you don't want to, I don't want to be distracted by costumes or by their buttons or their jewelry. I just want it to help tell the story. And that's what I'm looking for. I find that if I notice the editing in the movie, then it's probably not working for me. And it works when I'm just caught up in the whole story and the emotion of it. And then I'll, if I like a movie, I'll go back and have a look at my particular craft and see how it was done. And sometimes the things I really admire are actually the simplest scenes with maybe a two-hander with just two shots being intercut and somebody who's delicately crafted the balance between action, reaction and, and kept you interested in maybe an eight-page scene. Um, of course, there are imp very impressive cinematic moments in all the films that we're celebrating tonight, and I love those too, but sometimes where I really see a craft that I admire as an editor that's not dragging me through the story, but allowing me to not just get the information, but also the experience. Um, I think I, I uh, approach it from a very specific genre, which would be musicals. But the way that I love and appreciate songwriting the most is when songs function as verbs, as opposed to nouns or adjectives when they're always pushing story forward. So I think whenever I watch anything in a film or on a musical, when, when, when the, the song is doing work, and it's, it's, it's pushing story forward, which is, I think, what everybody else is saying. And the idea of invisibility, too, that you believe that this is coming directly from a character's mouth and that, that you don't see the writer, you don't hear the typewriter. I look for scores that are memorable. That's the, the main thing. And traditionally, what makes a score memorable, I think, is melody. It's a melody that... Um, you can you remember after the movie's over that you can walk out of the theater and hum or that you can hear a year later and know that that melody is from that movie. Um, there's also a, another just perfectly valid um, type of scoring that is happening more often these days that's more about a sonic approach than a melodic approach, but it's still the same idea where you can hear that score and you just know, oh, that's from that movie. Um, or when you think of the movie, you, th you think of the music. and um, if, if, a, if a score can be linked to a movie like that, um, that is a sign for me that it's a, a great score. And also, I'm, I'm assuming there's some young, uh, starting out filmmakers in the audience here. And I feel like the, you know, the world's changing so fast. Um, I mean, technology, digital world is changing fast. Did any of you have a mentor when you started out or, or somebody who gave you a piece of advice that you think, you know, it's like my job has changed, but I still uh, am, am learning from, from this piece of advice. I mean, you got anything you want to, you can share with, uh, with novices? Um, I, oh, the first piece of advice that I got that changed my career path, uh, I was doing Apollo 13 and Ron Howard, um, uh, we were trying to find like, what's the point of view of doing this? And Ron Howard said, well, what if Martin Scorsese shot the launch? How would that look? I was like, well, Okay, well, I don't notice any launch footage on his particular movies, but I'll, I'll study him, and then I studied the editing of it, and the rhythm that he got from the simplicity of putting a couple shots together in a particular rhythm with a particular sound, and that was the hook that made me edit and shoot and create the shots of the launch that you know, helped my career quite a bit, and then every movie after that, I was like always looking for the alternate way of doing something, mm. not the not the commonplace, what everybody else would do, but what is the the little twist that, that, that uh, uh, gives you that extra edge, you know, and just even a simple statement like, what if Martin Scorsese shot it, that doesn't sound like that would be what you would do. Now that has always permeates my, in my brain, I got a chance to even work with them and see what that's really like, so. Yeah. No, I mean, that, that, was, that was a good piece of direction. Um, anybody else? Any mentors? I, I was very lucky that I worked for an alcoholic as uh, my first mentor <laughs> because he would take a little sleep at lunchtime. He would be, shall we say, properly refreshed at about two o'clock and he would uh, take a sleep in a trim bin and somebody had to cut the fucking film. <laughs> So I learned a lot. I'm sorry, I just swore on your stage. I'm British, I could get away with it. Um, so, it sounds okay. But he, the big lesson he taught me, he would come round from his, uh, his little nap at, at, at about four or five o'clock. And I would have worked very hard uh, cutting a scene. And he would have the great you know, grace to go through and 
th through the scene with me and suggest some improvements and encourage me. So I learned a lot. It was my first assisting gig. So a typical example was uh, he had a scene with, which was a comedy scene of three old men sitting around a table, and it was shot on a wide shot and three close-ups. And I spent the whole afternoon trying to kind of cut these things together to be dazzling and fast and comedic and responsive and light. And um, he looked at it and he just said, just show me the wide shot. Yeah. So we put it, looked at the wide shot. He said, well, it's better. <laughs> and it, it was. It had all the body language and it had the rhythm, natural rhythm of the actors. He had three of the best actors of their day saying some of the best lines of dialogue and leave it alone. You know, just because they shot it, you don't have to cut it was the lesson I learned. So, uh, yeah, to him. I have a bit. Um, I was uh, told by a camera operator once, you're not hired because you know the gear better than anyone else. The guy at the rental house knows it better than anyone else anyway. They always will. You're hired because of how you communicate with the actors, with the director, and the producers, and everyone else on the set. Um, you'd be surprised at how little I know about cameras. Um, it's about communication. Like 90% about what I do is talking. Uh, yeah. No, I mean, I mean th those are several good pieces of advice. I mean, seriously, I, I would love to keep you guys here for another two hours, but I, I think that's not possible. So, um, the multi-talented Artie Schmidt is going to come out and present each of you with your trophies. Again, congratulations on, on great, great work. Thank you, thank you very much. And, and thank you again to the audience. Thank you. And I think, I think just stay where you are, and I think Artie's going to come by with a, like a tray uh, or a cart. Hi, good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for having me here tonight, and thank you to Tim for being such a terrific moderator. And such a terrific. <clears throat> and such a terrific group of wonderful, magnificent filmmakers. I've been a film lo lover for as long as I can remember, and in my years of film editing and studying this wondrous medium, it is a true rarity to come across such a diverse and remarkable group of artists such as these artists sitting before me tonight. I often reflect on what it is about films that make us feel alive and we would love them and why characters and films have such a profound impact on our lives. Films are a form of escapism, yes, but they are also a means to connect with actions, traits or emotions that you may not necessarily experience in your own life. They are a reminder of the incredible things that we as human beings are capable of and often offer a window into the wider world, opening our lives to new wonders and broadening our imagination in ways we never thought possible. These artists before me represent the embodiment of imagination. They are masters of their craft and elevate each of the respective films they are being honored for here tonight. These films would not be the masterpieces that they are without their impeccable editing, production design, makeup work, sound mixing, visual effects, cinematography, songs, score, sound editing, and costumes. From nefarious snakes to Medal of Honor recipients, from star-crossed dreamers to face-painted jokers, and from fortune-telling aliens to real everyday heroes, these individuals have time and time again made their mark on cinema. And this year, they have brought some of the best films of the year. It is my great honor to present these artists with the Variety Artisans Awards. Okay, again, thanks. I think there's going to be some photos. You're welcome to stay if you want. You're welcome to not if you don't. 
Uh, but again, thank you, everybody. Thank you.